today we are going over bad smoke. This is the smoke you do not want going over your food through your smoker. Let's go. Hello, my name is Kevin and today we are going to talk about dirty smoke. This is bad smoke you do not want in your cooking chamber. You can just smell that this smoke is off and I'm going to show you why this is happening and how to get better smoke. I'm also going to let you in on a little secret. Finally, I'm going to leave you with a tip on charcoal. Make sure to burn off your charcoal as good as possible. You want these to turn bright red, have a really good flame going because I could smell just the combustion, the poor fire that hadn't started yet because the charcoal was just starting. You can just start to smell when you're looking for it or I should say smelling for it, how off that smell can be. So you wanna get them red hot, you want them to ash over, and then you wanna load them up into your firebox. All right, most people as a beginner think they want just a cooking chamber engulfed with smoke. That is not the case. This much smoke will lead to off flavored food. So you really wanna be running a cleaner smoke. How do you get that? Well, first, how did I get here? Look at that. I got the nozzle, or I should say valve. I don't know why I said nozzle. I got the valve completely shut, all right? Fires need air to breathe. This needs to be open, all right? Now, once that gets open and enough oxygen allows the flame to catch again, we want to get a burning flame. That's how you run a proper fire. As you can see, we are now running a good fire. All right, the flame's going really well. It is combusting the way it's supposed to be. Let's take a look. All right, it's hard to see, but there is a bit of smoke coming off. It's very faint. It's not dark white billowing smoke. This is what you want. You want that clean smoke. So as you can see, you can't really see it coming out there. But you can see there's, there's smoke in the chamber. All right, it's very faint. That's what you want. You don't want that heavy smoke. All right, but Kevin, when I'm running, and I haven't got my temperature up yet, but when I get a hot flame going, my temperatures really tend to get high. All right, if that happens, you need to use less fuel. So you need to use less charcoal. You need to use smaller splits, all right? My Achilles heel is I like to use big splits and that causes poorly smoked fires. So for this size firebox, this piece of wood is just way too big. It needs to be cut down and split into smaller ones. I know you could probably jam this in here but it's really not what you want. It's gonna smother the fire. It's gonna produce a lot of poor smoke. So for your firebox, for the type of smoker you have, you really have to figure out how much fuel it can truly use. So this is one of the hardest things for somebody new to smoking. They just got a smoker. There isn't a lot of smoke coming across the chamber. So they think their food is not getting any smoke. The secret I want to let you in on is the first couple times you do your smoke, and I did this too, I just had way too much bad smoke. And we trick ourselves into thinking that that piece of meat we're chewing on that tastes like a branch, that that's good barbecue. It's not. We're new, we're excited, we can't wait to get that deep smoke flavor, but that's too much smoke you're putting on your food. There's no flame in there. 
right? You're not creating good smoking flavors. Now, everybody you invite over to your party, they're probably just as excited for you to have a new smoker and they taste so much smoke flavor, they might not realize, or what, I, what I'm trying to say is, they might be comp complimentary when they're either not used to good barbecue or they're just your friends and they don't wanna hurt your feelings, all right? For most of us, we don't learn about thinner blue smoke until later on, until we have a real friend that tells us, hey, that is just way too much smoke flavor on there. You're not creating enough good smoke. So a good rule of thumb is to always have a flame, always be producing a good smoke. Now for some reason, for me, even when I have a good fire going, I still don't always get that thin blue smoke. Even when I get my charcoal to the right size, I always have some white smoke and that's okay, but it's the really thick white smoke I showed you earlier that you want to avoid. Like I said, this isn't technically thin blue smoke that people really look for. It's got a little bit more white than I'd imagine, but I'm happy with it because it's not that really thick, heavy smoke and that's what you want to avoid. And that's what I want to leave you with. So I hope everyone's having a great day and I'll see you soon. What I want to leave you with today is charcoal. All right, premium lump charcoal is definitely a higher quality and it costs more because to me, it does taste better. But if you're doing a lot of smoking, it is completely fine to use briquettes. I got two bags for 16 bucks I would say hopefully this lasts me a long time, but it probably won't because I use the smoker a lot and I've been using charcoal as a base. So don't get tied up in, I have to use premium all the time. I love this stuff. I'll bring it out when I'm having a party and I wanna use it for that. But for when I'm cooking by myself, for my family, the wood provides the flavor. So I'll use this as my base for charcoal. There's a lot of people out there that get really hung up on the type of charcoal and you shouldn't use stuff that's inexpensive. No, you see a deal, you grab it because if you're doing it right, you're smoking all the time and you're gonna need a lot of fuel to get you through. Thank you.